Hi everybody, Jake, your resident content cowboy here, Yeehaw, and in this video, I want to take us on a little bit of a deep dive into Aegislash. I'm going to show you all of its moves, I'm going to talk about sort of how it combos, I'm going to show you some things that I think are maybe a little bit hidden, or at least some tips that could help you out while you're using this Pokemon. Maybe they're not super hidden, but they felt a little hidden when I was playing around with them inside of practice mode here. So let's just talk about this Pokemon uh, real quickly. I'm gonna go through everything with it. I'm gonna show you how it all works here. Uh, it's basic attack becomes boosted. Uh, oftentimes using one of its two moves, either it's sort of attacking blade form move or it's defending uh, shield form move, you get boosted attacks from it. Normal attacks, you're just slashing with your basic attack. You store up boosted attacks up to four of them. When you're in blade form uh, and you have your boosted attack, which by the way, you are always in blade form until you evolve into Aegislash. So as you're the two smaller ones, just your Hone Edge and Duo Blade, you are always in blade form, essentially. You're technically not stat wise, but the way you're boosted works as if you're in blade form. So, when in blade form, you swiftly pierce through opposing Pokemon, dealing damage. This will hit multiple Pokemon as you fly through them. When you're in your shield form, again, you unlock this once you evolve into Aegislash at level 7. You ram the opposing Pokemon, you deal some damage, you kind of stun them for a very, very brief moment, and you restore HP to yourself. You also reduce the cooldown of your other move, your blade form move, either Sacred Sword or Shadow Claw, and each uh, boosted attack consumes one count of boost. So you can kind of store these up and uh, you know go in there in blade form, slash around, or you get a lot of stacks, you move into your shield form and you're kind of ramming enemies and getting HP back. That's kind of how your basic attack works. Uh, you have the three evolutions here. Uh, you start as this little hone edge with the ability no guard. You just uh, receive and deal more damage. Same with duo blade. And then finally, once you evolve into Aegislash, you have the stat uh, stance change ability. This is... Um, there are some interesting things around this, and I'll talk about them, but the basic ideas are when you're in shield form, you're tankier. When you're in blade form, you're less tanky, but you deal more damage. That's the basics of it. Uh, using a blade move changes you to blade form. It increases your move speed, attack, and basic attack speed. Using a shield move changes you into shield form, uh, and it increases... For a second, my brain went, wait a minute, why is that F-O-R-M-E? Form? I guess that's a different way to... Do I not know how to spell form? Hold on. Am I crazy? Is that how you spell form? This is a total useless tangent. Maybe I'm crazy, but I thought form was F-O-R-M. I'm sure I'm going to get a million comments about how I've never been right about how to spell the word form. It's irrelevant. <laughs> using a blade move changes the user into blade form. Uh, you increase that attack speed using a shield move. Uh, changes you into shield form. You get more special defense and defense while you're in shield form. It's considerable, by the way. These are massive increases to your defense and special defense. You feel a lot squishier in your blade form than you do in your shield form. Then also, for a short time after switching from shield to blade, you get an additional increase of move speed and basic attack speed. So uh, switching back and forth not only puts you in the other form, F-O-R-M-E, but it also gives you a burst kind of, of attack speed and move speed as you're going through the stance change from your shield form. Uh, we'll take a look at his moves here. I'm going to take you into the practice area to go through these uh, a little more in depth. So I'll go through them kind of quickly here. Shadow Sneak, it's the first move that you would definitely pick. You kind of dash out in front of you, deal damage. It's actually pretty good. It increases your boost count when you hit. And at the same time, it actually has a pretty good secure on enemy Pokemon. Not too bad. Sacred Sword, that's that triangle move that you see. And again, I'm going to go in depth on this, so I'm not going to go too much into it. But if you put this triangle zone in front of you, you deal damage to opposing Pokemon in the area of effect, you throw them, it also increases uh, the boost count. Uh, the greater the number of opposing Pokemon in their damage, the more the boost count increases. When the move deals damage to wild Pokemon, it can increase by a max of two. So if you hit all the Bs, you still only get two boosts. When it deals damage to Pokemon from the opposing team, the boost can increase without limit to four. Four is your cap. At the same time as the eruption, the user slashes forward, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon that hits. I'm going to show you a little bit more about that in a second. And for a short time after this slash hits, damage dealt by the user partially ignores the defense of all opposing Pokemon. 
Pokemon. I do not know exactly how that works numbers wise. I haven't seen anyone post exactly how those numbers are calculated. The upgrade to this increases the user's attack if the triangle zone, and that's important to notice, uh, deals damage to opposing Pokemon. It's a nice little b uh, bonus there, and it feels like it's just more reason to kind of slash around and take everyone out once you land that triangle uh, at its upgrade, which I believe is level 11 for these first moves. Shadow Claw, the other option, you slash in front of you three times, uh, dealing damage. The final slash, the third slash in here is a rising slash. It deals damage and it throws them, which is a knock up. It knocks the opposing Pokemon up and increases your boost count by one if one of the three slashes hits. So you have a much larger uh, chance of increasing your boost count by using Sacred Sword. Shadow Claw has a lower cooldown. Also, when it upgrades, it increases your critical hit rate for basic attacks, boosted attacks, all moves except Unite moves. Uh, there's only one other move that can hit besides a Unite move. Uh, that is your Iron Head. However, I have tried a bunch of times. I can't seem to get that move to critically hit even after I kind of use this Shadow Claw ability. I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm going to keep working on it, but I can't seem to get that move to critically hit no matter what I'm doing there. So... Take that for what you will. Uh, however, this is the build you're going to run if you're looking to do any type of critical hit damage at all. Uh, if you're using crit items, I think you have to use Shadow Claw, basically, because your natural critical hit for Age of Slash is very low. Uh, according to Unite DB, Shadow Claw increases your crit rate by 20% if you land that final attack. Uh, your next moves, Iron Defense, it just basically gives you uh, the ability to nullify one attack completely, which is really, really nice. It also increases your boost count once you do that. It's really great for brawling someone. You can use it on wild Pokemon. You could tank an entire fly from a Talonflame. Uh, then you upgrade to either Wide Guard or Iron Head. Both of these moves are really interesting. We'll start with Wide Guard here. So Wide Guard, you lock down in place, but you do generate a shield around you. It increases your boost count by one the second you use the move. It shoves people in front of you, so it kind of gives them a little shove and like pops them up a little bit. Uh, when the shield is present, if you're attacked by enemies, it increases your boost count. You can get one boost for every different enemy Pokemon that attacks you, and it can be increased by a maximum of two due to attacks from opposing Pokemon. So it's just a great way to recharge that boost meter and then hopefully switch over to your blade form and do a ton of damage. Or if you want, attack in your shield form and recover a lot of health. If all the HP that's gained from your shield is depleted before the shield disappears, you perform a shoving action and you get another boost. So oftentimes you're using this in combat. Uh, you're either telling enemies, hey, don't attack me or you're going to make me stronger, or you're at least shoving them once they do attack you and you're increasing your boost count there. Once it upgrades, it reduces the cooldown. It starts at nine seconds. Once you get to level uh, nine, you get some natural cooldown reduction that gets you to about eight seconds. And... Uh, and then once you uh, further level this to its upgraded state, uh, your cooldown is a little over seven seconds. Feels like it's slightly over seven seconds. Iron Head here is the other move. This move actually does damage, but it does not provide you the same kind of shield that Wide Guard does. So you, you have a small dash towards the enemy direction. You deal damage to the opposing Pokemon. It increases the boost count by one, and you protect yourself with a shield. The shield doesn't protect you from hindrances, so you can still be knocked up and stunned and all that, but it does nullify damage. It's a little hard to time. It's harder to use than Iron Defense, but you get to use it pretty often. It has a lower cooldown than Wide Guard. When the shield blocks an attack, it disappears, and the user's boost count is increased by one. So it gives you uh, that nice little ability to get two boosts from it. Once it upgrades, it also increases your attack for a short time when an attack is blocked. I'm being told again from Unite DB. Let me pull this up here just so I get it exactly right because I was looking at this earlier and I don't want to. I want to make sure I don't get a number wrong. Unite DB is saying you get a plus 10 percent. Not like plus 10, but a plus 10% attack for a short time if you block a move, which is pretty big. That's almost the equivalent of getting uh, your entire weakness policy set up here. Use those two together. If you had weakness policy at four stacks and you had Iron Head block an attack, that would be such a massive increase. I mean, we're talking about a 22% increase to your attack stat. Pretty massive. So both really cool moves, definitely different styles here. Iron Head has that lower cooldown and it feels like it's a little 
little more brawly. And then wide guard, it almost feels like, uh, it feels very patient, you know? You're using it at the right time, you're getting your boosts back, and then once you have those boosts back, you're switching back into blade form and attacking here. And then we have its Unite move, Coup de Gras. So, Coup de Gras is interesting. I'll show you a couple interesting things about it again in practice here in one second. It deals decent damage. Uh, the lower their HP is, the more damage it does. It is an execute move in that respect. If you do knock out an opposing Pokemon, it increases your boost count. So, it's just more reason to use it. Knocking out an opposing Pokemon and getting your boost up, now you're going to be doing a ton of damage. So, it's just very ideal obviously to use this unite a lot it has a low cooldown i wonder what it says here exactly it says 100 second cooldown so that's very very low for equivalency if you look at a pokemon like pikachu pikachu's unite cooldown is 89 seconds and that's i think the fastest in the game right now i'm sorry if i'm wrong about that but i think that's pretty close to the fastest in the game right now so this has a very very low cooldown on its unite move uh, ideally, you want to use it in battle to make yourself kind of crazy strong once you use your Unite and then just take everybody out. And if you can KO an opposing Pokemon with it, even better. That's how you're going to set up these big, big KOs. All right, let me take you into the practice area and show you a couple cool things here. I'll start by going through your first two moves here. Just go ahead and give me a level drop cooldown. So Shadow Sneak, if you're heading into the jungle, you can just pop right over any wall with Shadow Sneak just like that. Pretty basic right there. Hitting with your Shadow Sneak gives you that boosted so you can fly through someone and then boost right back if you want. It's nice for a secure. So if a Pokemon's HP is kind of low, you fly through, hit them, and then you can get that secure oftentimes. You'll have to learn the exact sort of, you know, timing of it, but that's basically how that works and how you can get some last hits on Pokemon. So once you start to figure out, oh, it does so much damage here, like right about here, I can do that. And either I take them out with Shadow Sneak or I immediately fly back with my boosted and I KO the opposing Pokemon. Iron Defense works uh, all the time, but it also works when you're jungling or just attacking a wild Pokemon. As soon as I attack this Ludicolo, I'll pop up my Iron Defense. I will tank the hit, take no damage from what it's about to do, and it'll increase my boost by one. You'll see that here. So there we go. My boost count increased by one right there. I can do it again. Obviously, right now I have this on infinite cooldown, so we can see it's just giving me insane amounts of boost here. Again, you can have up to four boost on you at any time, and having four boost just lets you slash, slash, oh, we're, oh it's <laughs> taking me towards that uh, training dummy. Just lets you slash through a bunch of times. Again, all of your boosted attacks before you become Age of Slash are essentially in blade form, right? So there's those two moves here. I really like Shadow Sneak and Iron Defense uh, lets you kind of brawl early. I think it's super fun. Let's increase our level. Let's start talking about our next two moves here. Let's go with Shadow, or excuse me, Sacred Sword and Wide Guard. So Sacred Sword is this triangle area attack here. And here are a couple things to notice with it. First of all, you've got to notice like how little grace there is on this triangle so take a look at it all the way to the edge there you're not hitting anything you're just right there you're missing oops sorry right there like basically the tip of it if it's there i think this is like the the limit yeah right there it misses so you can see what you put out and what lands on the ground it's almost exact it doesn't quite make it all the time so if someone's right at the tip of that you are not going to be hitting them with your sacred sword if they're basically right in here, you will hit them. So it's it's close, but they've got to kind of be inside your triangle there. Just something to uh, make note of. When you do hit with your triangle, as you can see, your boost account, your boost count goes up, your boost account goes up. And you know, this is that moment where you land it and then you're in there slashing them around, dealing tons of damage, right? So a couple other things to notice about it. You see those three arrows on the ground right there? That is essentially where Aegis Slash is going to fly in. So if I throw it right here, my triangle hits. Oh, I actually got him there. My triangle hits right there. But I do not. So you, you are slashing through those kind of three little arrows right there. But you are not slashing all the way through your triangle. So your triangle is hitting here for 422 damage, but I am not hitting the additional slash of Aegis Slash flying through unless they're about right there. Then you're hitting both of them. So there are two attacks that are happening during that. It's one for the triangle and one for Aegis Slash, which also is why if you're really close to someone, 
your triangle can miss, but you can slash through them. So it's something to notice here. I am not hitting with my triangle when I'm this close. I'm missing. But I'm hitting them with Aegis Slash's dash right here. So ideally, you want them to be in that big, fat part of the triangle there, so you hit them with both. That's just something to notice here. Hitting them with both is pretty big. You do a lot more damage if you hit them with both. If you're too close, you only hit them with the one. And if you're too far away, you only hit them with the one being the triangle there. Something to point out is it's the triangle that actually knocks them up into the air that does the throw, as this game calls it. It is not your dash. If you hit them with the dash only, you do not knock them up into the air. That's another thing to notice. And then for a short time after the slash hits, damage dealt by Age of Slash partially ignores the defense of enemies. I believe when they say when the slash hits, they actually mean Age of Slash here and not your triangle. That is what I am gathering from it. I believe that is correct. Okay. Moving on to Wide Guard here, and then I'll talk about the upgraded version of Sacred Sword here in a minute. Wide Guard is a move that you're using in combat oftentimes. You pop up your Wide Guard just like this, you gain a boost, and then you push enemies back. Again, you get more from this if people are attacking you. You do get a shield, you can see that shield on there. That big white shield that you gather on there, and it increases your boost count. I will show you your boost count just increasing while you're using it. Again, you use it, boost count goes up, and if they were to hit you during this, your boost count could go up by multiples, depending on how many people are hitting you here. It's really nice for increasing your boost count a lot. It does have a long cooldown, so your cooldown here, let me turn cooldowns off, excuse me. Your cooldown here, again, is nine seconds at level eight. It uh, You have a decrease in cooldown at level nine, and then again, a decrease when it levels up. But it's a pretty long cooldown for a move. So you're not able to go back into shield form for a while. However, looking at the timing of it, let's say you were to slash here in blade form, you had your boosteds, and then you were to use your wide guard here. Slash, 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 slash. You use your boosted and then it's kind of back your sacred sword is kind of back at that point so you get almost all of the time you need for sacred sword to come off cooldown because it is on a seven second cooldown after you sacred sword slash and then into your wide guard you probably have the cooldown of sacred sword back up so while the cooldown on wide guard is pretty long it's not terrible if you're using it with sacred sword uh, I haven't used it a ton with Shadow Claw yet, but it's not terrible if you're using it with your Sacred Sword because it's kind of being active as long as that cooldown is active right there. Something to notice with this, it has that nice shove that it messes with enemies, but it stops you from moving. So it's really important to notice this. You are stuck where you are. You use it, no matter where the enemies are, you get some snapback or something, you're going the other way. Uh, you are stuck where you're at when you use this move. You're not mobile anymore. You go into shield form and you lock down. You get that big shield and you're generating a lot of boost here. You could use it to attack enemies in your shield form to give you uh, a little health back. We're not seeing it because I'm full health, but you could use it for that. You also could use it uh, just to get that defense, move back a little bit, and then move back into blade form with your boosted. So there are a couple options there when you're using wide guard. Let me show you a few more things here before we move on to our next moves on our coup de gras. Again, wide guard being upgraded. You can see the cooldown here. Oops, I've moved cooldowns off. I keep forgetting. Uh, you can see the cooldown on this now down to about seven seconds once it's upgraded. It's a, a late upgrade level 13 and all it is is a cooldown reduction. Not the biggest upgrade for this character. Sacred Sword actually has a really cool upgrade, however. Uh, it increases your attack by 50 for a short time if you hit enemies with a triangle attack. 50 is a lot. I mean, that's what? Ha more than half the stacks on, a on attack weight. So just hitting an enemy with this. Let's look at my basic attack here. Get rid of these boosteds really quick. So, my basic attack does 479 damage. If I hit with my triangle, use one boosted here, I'm dealing 529 damage. Big, you know? For a brief period, my attack is higher. So, what that means is once you have this upgrade and you've got all of your boosts on, you're then able to... Let's get some boosts here land an attack, and then just do tons of extra damage as you're slashing around. It's a pretty 
important thing to notice because that's when you're doing all your big boost damage here. And I'm going to start this over so I can talk about the next moves and then a little bit about our coup de gras right here. Because there's some interesting stuff about our coup de gras too. Did I call it a coup de gras? Okay, we'll look at our other two moves here. We'll look at Shadow Claw and Iron Head. I do have two critical hit items on right now, a Scope Lens and a Razor Claw, just so we can hopefully get some more critical hits out of this here. Uh, Shadow Claw appears that it can crit even before it is upgraded. Use it a few times here. Your crit rate's pretty low with this character. There's a crit. There's a couple crits here. So this move appears that it can crit. Uh, well, it doesn't even appear to, Jake. <laughs> it can crit. This move, Shadow Claw, can critically hit. Even before it is upgraded, you can critically hit with it. I will say, however, it is, you know, a low, low rate on this character. Once you upgrade to level 9, you do get the most critical hit possible with this character, which is 10%. You stack that on top of the items I have, a level 30 Sculpt Lens and Razor Claw. You're really only looking at 18% crit before your Shadow Claw upgrades. So, Shadow Claw, you can see the three slashes on there. If you use it from this range, it's interesting because the furthest range is where your last attack will be. The closest range there is where your first will be. So, you are kind of looking to get in this sweet spot here of about right there. And then you're hitting them all. Just kind of in that middle area right there. And you can actually see that little uh, Pokeball sort of looking thing right about there. That's where this attack does the most. And this is where it reaches to hit at least its last attack. So that last ball you'll hit once with the final attack. This close one you'll hit all three. Okay. That's Shadow Claw right there. Pretty basic. There's not much to say about Shadow Claw, except that's what it does. It generates boosts. It knocks people up. Once it upgrades, I think at level 11, it's pretty solid because it gives you a big boost to your critical hits. Okay, Iron Head, your next move here. This is that short dash I was talking about. You get a shield that does nullify damage. It's a little hard to time, I gotta say. But if you can time it correctly, it will nullify damage from massive moves. So it's kind of similar to your Iron... Uh, not iron, what was it? Iron defense from earlier? I can never remember the names of everything. Yeah, your iron defense from earlier. So it's a little harder to use, but you do get this dash and it does damage to people. So you can see that doing 400 damage here. I can't seem to get this move to crit. Um, it says it can crit once you land Shadow Claw, but I don't know how long that critical hit bonus is active. So it's just been a little tough to figure out. I'll go to those moves here in a sec. Let's talk about your coup de gras really quick. So. Your coup de gras is this big old move right here. It's big slash in front of you. It's pretty sweet. Has a little bit of a charge up time right there. And then it unleashes this big line attack. So a few things to notice. Uh, there is the range for your coup de gras. Let's watch the dummy here. You actually hit them outside your range. So just something to notice here. It goes a little farther than you think it does actually. Uh, and then it has. it's a little forgiving on the sides. If you're at about there, you still hit. At about there, you still hit. And then if you're a little further, you are now missing. So it has a cone of influence of about right there. And again, just a little further than you think its range goes. That's even slightly not there. Just a hair further than its range shows you are hitting with your coup de grace. Something else to notice, if you happen to be fighting someone right here, it will land right on you. So you do hit if you have an opponent directly on you. If they're slightly behind you, it will also hit. So just something to notice here, that it still hits if it's kind of right here in your zone of influence. However, if you're moved off about that much, it starts to miss. So just a couple things to notice, the range is actually a little more than they show on your targeting wheel there. Uh, so if you're right on an opponent or they're right behind you, you will hit with your coup de gras. Just kind of important to know here. Let's go ahead and upgrade our abilities. So, Iron Head, once it's upgraded, we're not going to be able to show this, but uh, once you block a move, you get a 10% uh, attack uh, increase, which is nice. It's not always easy to time blocking a move, but in the heat of battle, it's not too difficult to block moves when you're switching between Iron Head and Shadow Claw. Uh, Shadow Claw, however, now that we have its upgrade, if I hit with our, I believe it's our third attack. I think we have to hit with our third attack to make this work, right? Well, according to Unite DB, it just says increases critical hit rate, but I've seen other things say you have to hit with your third attack. Either way, once we hit with our third attack, our crit rate goes up, so we're critical hitting way more. And what that means is if you're running a crit build and you have all your boosted attacks set up, 
let's say you're in shield form, you're ready to fight. If you land that third attack, it is time to do your boosteds because you have a higher likelihood of critical hitting in that moment. Doesn't mean you're gonna, because even then, you've still only got a critical hit rate that is equivalent to Cinderace or Greninja once they're leveled up. It is not an incredible crit rate at all, but if you're running crit items, that is the time to try to critical hit. Once your Shadow Claw Plus has landed, you have a higher chance to critically hit. As far as Shadow Claw Plus letting Iron Head crit, I still haven't been able to make it work. Let's see if we can do it. Can we get a crit here? I don't know how long it even lasts. Come on, I want to see Iron Head critically hit. It says this move can critically hit, but I don't, I don't know that to be true. Are we seeing any crits here at all? No. I could do this forever. I was doing it earlier and I couldn't find it critting even one single time. Let me see if I can use it against an enemy and maybe I can have some better results. Where are you at, buddy? There you are. For whatever reason, I can't get this move to critically hit. <laughs> he just grabs me. Okay, come here. Dude, where are you going? Hitting all these bees. Obviously, Shadow Claw is critically hitting, but I'm not able to get Iron Head to critically hit, even though it says it can. If you found an, a way to get to critically hit, please let me know in the comments. I have not seen Iron Head critically hit. And according to Shadow Claw, it should let Iron Head critically hit, but I, I just can't seem to get it to work. I definitely can see Shadow Claw critting, which is pretty cool. You know, these are some big little pops of damage when these crits lands, you know, 1200 damage just from your move right there. And also I've had the move cooldowns off here, but you'll notice the move cooldowns between this set of moves is a bit better. So if you hit with your Shadow Claw, move into your Iron Head, and then you start hitting with your boosteds, your Shadow Claw's back almost immediately. Let me see if I can show you that here. Of course he's up here taking Rotom. Let's go, buddy. So if I'm landing my Shadow Claw into this and just hitting with one boost, your Shadow Claw is immediately back. By that time, your Iron Head's back. It's just a lot of comboing between these two moves here. You're just going back and forth between Iron Head, Boosted, Shadow Claw, back and forth, back and forth. But you're not generating as much of your stacks if you're using a build like this because your, bu your Boosted's go rather quickly in the heat of battle. So again, I can't get Iron Head to crit. I can get Shadow Claw to crit a lot, but never Iron Head. Let me know if you've noticed that in the comments. Now, I'm gonna take you into a game. I'll talk about some held items a little bit, and I will show you I'll show you a build that I probably wouldn't play with a lot. I know I made a very popular video that everyone loves called Wide Guard Bad, but I'm gonna show you how to use Wide Guard correctly inside of a match. All right, taking Decidueye here into the top lane. Uh, I played Decidueye for a... Uh... <laughs> it's late and I called it Decidueye. It looks like I'm gonna be running an attack weight and a score shield for this match. Uh, so I'm gonna be stacking here. I'm still gonna be using that build. I'm gonna be using the Sacred Sword Wide Guard build. Uh, a lot of Age of Slash's uh, kit actually benefits from stacking. So I can tell you a little bit about it while this match loads. Uh, the dash attack on Sacred Sword benefits from stacking items, 174% uh, of attack, so that's pretty great. Uh, as well as the shield that you get, I believe, yeah, it's based on 200% of your attack, as well as some additional metrics. So it really helps with a lot of your kit here. So it should be pretty useful for us, if we can get those stacks in. Do I have my stack counter? Do I have it working? Oh, I don't have it working. No. Sorry, everybody. I gotta try to get my stack counter working. I don't think I can get it working mid game. That's a stack. Oh. Could I? Oh no, but it's not actually working. It'll make the sound. All right, sorry. <laughs> my computer restarted, so I have to restart things. Okay, got my stack though. That's a stack, that's one. Will I remember how many I have? It's very unlikely, but I've got one. Let's see if I can get two. They're on 
one goal. Two of them are. So that's not happening. Hello, chompy boy. Gonna try to bait him into a fight here. Hopefully my Garchomp will eat him. We got one. Got it back real quick. See if I can get back in there. Looks like we got one. Yeah, that's about as good as that's gonna get. This is gonna level me up. Get me my sacred sword. That's a stack. What is that? Two, right? I can't even count. Oof. I'm done. Oof. I'm done. Two stacks. Heading back top. Not doing too bad so far. Just grabbing that little piece of energy there. Just a little piece of energy. Just in case. Okay. Snore going down. We got two here. It's gonna be hard to stop them. Doesn't have a score shield though. Or if he did, it maybe ran into a bug or something, but. I don't think he gets out of this one. No. That's a stack, that's three. Got our wide guard here. Ooh. There's four. So big, these are big numbers for me right now. Nice early numbers. We got dread, getting five. Yeah, that's fine. And six. Oop, didn't realize I was breaking it there. My mistake. Sorry, guys. Got that, though. Got our stacks. Ooh, that beam. Oh, no, we're not following that up? Oh, I was going to say, that would be tragic to not follow that up. Nice job, guys. Okay, so we got our six stacks, which means all of our attacks are bigger. Our shields are bigger. Everything's bigger. But this is Texas right now, because everything's bigger in Texas, and now everything's bigger with Aegislash. Yeehaw. Got some big damage numbers about to come out. Gengar's here. Just using that in case he turned around to uh, throw like a hex on me or whatever. We fighting this? Got him. Let's score real quick. Gengar. Yeah. Oh, he's a Shadow Ball Gengar. Oh, he let that go in. Okay. Oh, he left. Come on, everybody. Oh, no. Snorlax left? No, Snorlax. I think the three of us there absolutely murder them. No goal. Oh, well. No big deal. So, doing pretty well so far. Again, stacked up. Everything's going well there. I'm going to grab some experience as I head down towards lane. The only thing I don't like about this build when I'm just like attacking is I feel like it takes a while to KO things. Because wide guard doesn't really help you. Like KO wild Pokemon is what I'm referring to. Alright. Okay. He was looking for a steal. It's admirable. It wasn't gonna work, but it's an admirable admirable attempt. Oh 
Nice. Big shields. Big shields. Big shields. Got him. Oh! Right into that big beam. Oh no! I didn't dodge it! If I only had to dodge that, his shield drops and we take that. Dang! I dropped my slow smoke so hopefully I could walk around it. I missed it. Alright, that's a big score. Not a huge overdunk, but it's something. Goal's gone, which means experience is up for us. Little victories, everybody. Little victories. You do a lot of damage with this build stacked up. You really do. It'll be interesting to see if anyone tries to play at top lane competitively. I don't know if they will. It just feels like there are some options that are just so much better. But, I mean, boy, it does a lot of damage when you stack it up. Now again, this is wide guard, not iron head. Full disclosure, iron head is my more preferred strategy. You, can, I feel like you can just walk around with stacks easier with it, you know. Like I've got my stacks here, but I kind of have to wait a sec. And oh, he's gone. Oh no, he got away! <gasps> How tragic! Sad. Sad. Can't believe he got away from that. Let's take Dread. I hope maybe Garchomp can get here in time. Snorlax not participating. He's a Flailax too. Surprising he wouldn't just try to burn that. Okay. Let's head into the center here. I think we win this. Gengar scoring top. I set to go here. Cinder's attacking me, that's okay. Moving back around. Looking for my end, there's their guard chomp. We get one or two? I don't think we hit Gengar with that. I think we only hit one. Oh, no. He got me. No! He got me! I thought I was going to get him there. Dang. Snorlax center. Venusaur's just kind of chilling. Yeah, he needs to pick off Cinder there. Cinder is the target. Yeah, that's a big beam. Some good damage there. Chomp coming back in. I'm coming back in. Gengar is just scoring. So right now it's just it's time to it's time to win this because Gengar is just continuing to score. I think we got it. Ooh, Char got it. Nice. Good job, buddy. A little stacking it up. Boink. Don't worry, I'm blocking for you, dude. GG. So there we go. A little wide guard sacred sword. And uh, there's going to be a lot more Age of Slash to come. I don't think this is the best build, but I do think it works pretty well with stacking. And there are some really incredible moments you could take advantage of wide guard inside of a battle when everyone's attacking you. It's kind of tough because you have to go back and forth between wanting to attack, but knowing that you need to charge up. All right. Thank you all for watching and listening. I hope you enjoyed this kind of in-depth, deep dive into Age of Slash. Again, more to come, and I will have an idea for the best build soon. I don't believe this is it. Thank you all. Mwah!